Do you feel like you're barely keeping your head above water? That no matter how hard you try, meaningful progress remains out of reach? Heather gets that. She battled an eating disorder for years before seeking help. Now in recovery, Heather is here to tell you that positive change is possible even when it doesn't feel that way. Join her as she shares openly about her struggles and small triumphs. Fair warning, though. Heather doesn't hold back. Her candid story may trigger some. But for those wanting honesty, hope, and healing, this is 1% Better with Heather. The information and stories shared on 1% Better are based on host Heather's personal experiences with eating disorders and mental health challenges. Heather is not a licensed doctor, therapist, dietitian, or other health professional. Her advice and opinions should not be taken as professional medical advice. Please consult your physician or a qualified health provider regarding any medical or health-related issues. 1% Better also contains descriptions of eating disorders that may be triggering for some listeners. Discretion is advised. Hey there, my little gappers, and welcome to 1% Better with Heather. Today, I have a very special friend in the studio, well, sort of in the studio, over uh, technology, but it feels like you're here with me. I have Gina Perrin with me. Hello, Gina. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm excellent. Thank you for having me. So why don't we just jump right in? Let Tell everyone all about yourself. Sure. Okay. Well, uh, I'll try to make that brief. That could be pretty long in my 47 years. Um, I am coming to you from Los Angeles, but I am from a small farm in Pennsylvania. And I always say that I fell in love with health, well, health wellness, fitness, probably before I was born. Uh, my dad uh, was a competitive bodybuilder. And from the time that I could walk, I was in the gym watching him and his friends uh, work out. And so that's where my love of fitness came in. I am a personal trainer and a health and wellness, certified health and wellness coach at this point. Uh, but I didn't start out uh, doing that. So, and this is part of the story. Uh, so uh, again, really great role model as parents and living up, living on a farm, growing up on a farm, grew up very, you know, clean eating, fresh outdoors, all those things. Um, Went off, uh, had a career, you know, in my 20s, raising kids, got divorced, yada, yada. Now, um, at the end of my 20s, um, I, I met somebody new and um, I was, you know, happy again and we had just gotten engaged. So really excited for that next chapter. And I want to point out that my fiance at the time, um, he was very much into fitness like I was. So we were like the, the fit couple, you know, that couple, the couple you see like at the gym or out in public, they're just, you can tell they live a very uh, clean lifestyle. Uh, we worked out every day. It was, um, it was just part of our life and things were going great. Uh, and then uh, Christmas morning, 2010, my, uh, my father and I found my brother in his home and he had committed suicide. So, um, I'm sorry. At that very moment, I knew that nothing was going to be the same. I didn't know the magnitude of it. Uh, but but I knew that from the, you know, the minute prior to knowing to the minute after were two different worlds. Within six months of his death, my engagement was called off. Within four years, I left everything and everyone that I knew, and I moved across the country to Los Angeles. And that is where my life took a complete, you know, turn at that point. Cause obviously I, I started a new career when I got here and Heather, honestly, you know, I guess a part of me thought geography would help <laughs> a change of scenery would, would help. Um, but I was internally spiraling. I had not seen anyone. I had not gotten any help 
to resolve it, you know, um, and during the day times I would be okay, but nighttime was like the worst for me. I didn't want it to be dark and go to sleep because that's when, you know, the thoughts, thoughts come and, and nightmares and everything else. So in that time, I, I gained a lot of weight. I didn't even recognize myself. I was no longer that, that fit person. I was overeating. I was over drinking, um, to the point of just passing out by myself at home. I became almost like a shell of a person that I didn't even know who I was. And, you know, I'd say, I'm going to, I'm going to fix this and turn it around at night. And then the next day would come and and I just start all over again. I was very much in a, in a deep, deep rut. Um, dare I say, dare I say depression, anxiety, all the things. Right. Um, but externally, you know, if you met me and, and, and I fell into like my new job and things were going great there and, um, great coworkers and everything, everybody would say I was just this happy person and, and I wasn't. And that's why it is very, very, very important for me today to understand that even if you're in the grocery food store, and I've said this story before, there were people that smiled at me that were checking me out at the store and gave me a compliment or said something nice and I was dying on the inside and they made my day. You really truly don't know what someone is going through. So I I have a lot of grace for if somebody maybe, um, you know, says something not so nice or, or acts out because maybe there's something going on that you don't, don't realize. So what happened? (laughs) It could have gone really bad, right? I could have gone, I could have continued on the path that I was on. And, um, I knew, I knew that it was not only going nowhere fast, but it was getting worse. And, um, Heather, I'd love to say there was some bolt of lightning that hit me and was like, boop, snap out of it. But it didn't happen like that. It did. However, wake up one morning from being passed out from the night before and was like, enough is enough, like enough what I'm doing to my body. And so hungover, I literally stumbled across the street to a brand new cycling studio that had just opened across the street from my apartment. And I took a class and I probably smelled like alcohol and sweating it out. And, um, you know, I felt a little better afterwards and I was like, oh, right that feeling of working out that was so ingrained in me my whole life. It was like a, it was, it was like coming home. It was very comforting. And so I, um, for the next probably six months, I got into great physical shape. (laughs) I knew how to do that. That was the portion that I knew how to do. Um, but I didn't know how to take care of here, my mind. And, uh, that was the last piece. And that's when I reached out and started going to therapy. And that's when my life really changed. That man, you've lived a thousand lives. I always say that (laughs) man. And honestly, after researching you, you and I live very, very similar lives. Like we could be twins. Let me tell you. And so if you don't mind, let's go back in time just a little bit. You talked about living in a very small town. And from what I know of you, you said the thing to do was drink, drugs, get mm-hmm. married young, have kids. That's your life. That's it. Yeah. How did how did that affect you? <laughs> um well, I did those things <laughs> I, and, and, um, it, you know, didn't work out for me. I, we, we, we were married for a brief time. We have, you know, two great kids, but we, you know, that didn't work. Um, but I have friends that got, you know, that 
from back there and they married their high school sweetheart. They're still married and have a fabulous life. And I love that. I love that it works for some people. It just, it just didn't happen to work for me. Right. Um, I got great kids from it. Um, so there's no, there's no regrets there. And I believe, I truly, truly believe that wherever we're at in the very present moment in our lives is where we're supposed to be. Even in the bad times, even passed out on the floor of my apartment, that had to happen. There needed to be a death of my ego for me to come up out of that. Um, I love that I'm from a small town. I love that everybody knows everyone. When I go back and visit, it's, it's an amazing community. Um, it really is where there's something to be said for where people know your name. <laughs> what was that? The mm -hmm. show cheers. Yeah. It's, it's, it's true though. You know, it's true. Somebody like there's, the, I love when I go back and I visit and it's like, oh my gosh, there's that familiarity, like not much has changed. And there's, there's so much good in that. Um, where my path led me has been really amazing too. I, I just, I could have never dreamed that I'd be living, you know, near Malibu and on, on the beaches and, and where I am now. And thanks to David, David, my brother, I don't believe I said his name, you know, I, I would have never moved here or across the country. I would have never stepped into what I believe my purpose is now. And that is to be on my health and wellness journey and to help other people with that, to go into the fitness and health world full time. None of those things would have happened. None of those things would have happened had all the events prior happened. Um, so I'm truly, I'm truly great. I'm grateful for being from a small town. I'm grateful for the journey that I'm on and where it has led me. So I think it worked out. <laughs> I think it, I think it did. Well, and it's still unfolding, right? I mean, uh, hopefully I have a long life to live and, um, and I'm excited to see where this continues to take me. So if you don't mind, mm -hmm. can we speak about David? Sure. Absolutely. How old were you when he passed? I was 33 and he was 31. He was my younger brother. I am very sorry. We were talking off camera. My uncle committed suicide in November. So a couple months ago. Um, that that changes you and my uncle was in his 70s when he took his life so it just says it doesn't matter right mm -hmm. what you're going through at any age but that's very 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 young yes <sighs> um and and you talk about you were en engaged at the time right Yes. How did that all unfold for you? One of the biggest hurdles, I guess is the right word, that I had to get through, through therapy, by the way, was the guilt that I was carrying. And let me explain. I was so absorbed in my own life that I didn't take true notice of what was going on in David's. It was all about, you know, me and my new fiance and, uh, you know, where we're going to get married and, and all the things. Um, he was extremely bright, very high IQ and uh very good at math and so he would tutor my older daughter who at the time needed some tutoring she was i, I believe in yeah, middle school and i would drop her off once a week at his house to for tutoring and i barely took notice of like what was going on with him just drop her off pick him up 
you know, pick her up. Thanks. Um, and so when he died, I was like, how did I not see those? How did I not see it? Why didn't I see it? Why was I so self-absorbed in, in just me, 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 my, my world, what was happening in my world? I understand now that that doesn't mean anything would have changed, but that guilt ate away at me for years. Hence Which the drinking. Part of why I over, uh, was overeating and over drinking. Wanted that to stop. Shut that off. I don't want to feel that because that feels bad. That that guilt is is bad, right? Um, that that's how I took it, and that's how I internalized it. I understand every everyone takes you know death very very differently, and I respect that. Um, that's that's what happened with me with that, and so. I shut off to my fiance, like, how could I have this like great life and be doing, I, I completely shut it down. Like I had to somehow now try to fix this other, even though there's no fixing, but like, how can I help my parents and, and how can I, you know, whatever it was, but stop making it about me because <laughs> I was living with so much of that pain and that guilt. That's how that unfolded really. And Unless you've been affected by suicide, like people can empathize, but unless you're living in this hell, I, I understand the guilt. I should have done more. I should have said something. I should have seen it. There's yep. a lot of times you, you're going to go mad. Like, like you wouldn't, that, that's the one horrible thing. You'll never get an answer. And if you got the answer, you're not going to like the answer because you're still going to think that you can do something about it. Yeah. And I... I empathize so much with you for that one, right? And you've talked about as well, like the drinking, the overeating, the coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And we feel that we can control so much, but then just, hello, hurricane, right? You're just going further and further down the drain. Yeah. And you say there was no like aha moment, but there had to be, so, like so like one day i always say like this switch just went off done can't do this no more what was your i can't do this no more this is gonna be tough for me to say oh i'm sorry that's okay but there definitely was a moment um i i never thought about doing what david did so let me be clear about that. But I understood how he felt. I understood how he got to where he got to in my lowest moments. And it scared the fucking shit out of me. It scared me. Where I knew it was like, I had there, something has to be done. <laughs> um, and, um, and, and then I had, you know, I had a lot more empathy for him too. Cause I'm like, oh my God, if this is even a fraction of what he was feeling in the moments leading up to it, I can't imagine the pain that he was in. Um, so yeah, that's definitely, <laughs> that is definitely, it, it was enough to scare me. It was enough to scare me. Let's just say let's say that. And it was enough to make it glaringly obvious to me, if it wasn't obvious before, that I could not fix it by myself. I could fix the physical part. The gym is a natural place for me. That is that is a home place for me. I know what to do to physically get in shape, but I had zero resources on anything else. And and just as you mentioned, the coping mechanisms. I had none that were help, healthy. Yeah. Didn't even know where to start. And I know this is going to sound ridiculous, um, but, but I even tell this to clients, like something as small as 
I got up every day to a blaring alarm because I'd wait till the last minute until I had to get up. First thing I do as I'm turning on the coffee is turn on the news. So I'm taking in all this negative energy, right? And having no idea that I'm literally starting my day. I'm fueling my day after a night of negative, negative, negative all night, right? And then starting my day with negative. I was having no idea how all those external factors were affecting me. I don't even have cable anymore. When I learned healthier coping mechanisms and became aware of what I was taking into my body, not just on food and drink, but what I was taking in through my ears and my eyes and what I was allowing to be around me was just magnifying any of those feelings, magnifying them. If you think about it this way, when you're in a good mood, sometimes you don't even know why you're in a good mood and you run in to somebody who is just always positive, a positive friend, and they're smiling and their energy is bouncing right off of yours. You're now even in a better mood. <laughs> they, yeah. they have just, they've just excelled your, your mood, right? And, and, and the, the opposite is true. And I was just taking a negative all day because I was in that space up here without even, without even realizing it. I understand that because I don't have cable anymore. And it <laughs> came down to me getting in my workplace accident. Accident. Now that I have PTSD, I, I couldn't, like there's certain TV shows I can't watch anymore. Like I can't watch anything to do with anything criminal. I know those are the big shows, right? If there's an NCIS, NBC, whatever, SVU, no, Heather's out. Grey's Anatomy, I would wake up in the middle of the night in sweats and it took me forever to figure it out. Taking out that negative when you are in a place of fight or flight, because that's where you were mm -hmm. living. And I just learned last year, that's not normal. Well, I'm 45. Uh, that could have been helpful a couple years ago. Right? <laughs> and yeah. not be on this high alert all the time. After you did all that and took all that out, it sounds like an elephant came off your chest. How did you feel about all that? And did you go through some weirdo withdrawal? from that? Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. I love that question. Yeah, I did go through a little withdrawal. And here, here oh, so withdrawal, I love that. Um, habits die really hard. And I was in a position where I liked the negativity, dare I say. The, I mean, I was looking back, by the way, like looking back and having to talk this out and, and everything looking back. It's like, yeah, I just, I kept perpetuating it almost like you deserve to suffer. I deserve to suffer because my brother suffered and I didn't know yada, yada, what all the, all the, all the guilty guilt, shame, stuff, right? all the horsemen, come on oh, down. Exactly. All the horsemen, right? So, um, yeah, there was a withdrawal. Now, to be very clear and for your audience, like this, it took, I'd say, a good two years to really fully make all of those changes. I didn't do all the things that I do now in a weekend, I just change everything. No, <laughs> there was a, you know, there was a withdrawal from the morning routine that I was doing every day, because even though it wasn't healthy, it was easy. I was so used to it. It was already a habit. It was a habit to art. Just hit that coffee button, turn on that, the remotes right there. Like I had a routine down and those things, they stick. You just have to I say one thing at a time, change one thing at a time, one, one click, 1%, one, one little habit, one thing at a time and stick with that. Two, three months, change another habit. 
whatever that is. Everybody's going to have something different. My, my list looks different than, than somebody else's list. Um, so it does take time. It takes a little work. And I, I hate to say that, but it does take work. It took work for me to get into the bad habits I got into. That didn't happen the day after he, David passed. Yeah, It happened four to six years after he passed all those bad things. I didn't gain all that weight overnight. I didn't start, you know, drinking a bottle of wine a night overnight. That, that it, it didn't happen overnight. So the, the same goes for the positive things that you put back in your life. It's, it takes, it takes time. It takes time. And I always, I, I would get up just the example of cable, just to give an example. When I turned all that off, I still turned the TV on every day when I made the coffee initially. There's YouTube and I put a motivational thing on and have that playing in the background as I'm having my coffee instead. Now I don't even turn on the TV, but I still was able to like, Hey, let me turn this on. But now I'm putting something positive into me. So it's just an example of like how, how you can start incorporating healthier, healthier habits. And for the younger generation who probably doesn't want to watch, I haven't watched the news. My mom always says like, don't you watch the news? No. And you get some, and when I talk about the withdrawal, it's like, because you feel like you're supposed to be, our parents read the paper every morning, right? right? Now it's few and far between anyone gets the paper. I don't even know if there's paper companies around anymore. <laughs> and everything's online. So yeah. now the next generation is like phone, phone, phone. What's going on on TikTok? What's going on on Instagram? What's going on on Facebook? And it's, I don't know about you, but I can't even go on my Facebook anymore because people treat it like they're diary and i'm like i don't want to hear all this shit right i want to go back to 1982 can i see clips from like facts of life or something oh, right? I so. can i watch gem that sounds amazing exactly but you know like everyone just needs to be it's almost like it's always been a rat race, but it feels like it's just more and more and more with social media. I got to be the first one to know this. I got to be the first one to do this because there's so much reward in it. And as a Canadian, TikTokers here, and I'll just pick on them for a sec. They hate me anyway. I, I, I don't get our creator fund, right? There's no making money in Canada. That's like not going to happen. Not just me, everyone who lives in Canada. And now you see this 18 year old, 14 year old making a video about makeup and they're worth seven gazillion dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, I can see how other people are like, well, I got to be first. I got to be faster. I got to be better. I got to be more shock therapy. What do you think about all that? Uh, Sorry, that's I'm a lot. I'm glad that I'm in the generation that I'm in. Um, well, I'm right there with you. It would have made, oh my gosh, my teenage years a million times worse. So I do have some empathy for the younger generation now. They don't know any different and it's, it's, that's tough. That's really, really, really tough. Um, but today, you know, I'm 47. Um, everything I know is, is social media, but I have limited myself twice a day. Um, you know, I'm on it cause of my business, but I don't need to be on all time. And the other thing is, and, and my marketing team, they taught me this and I was forever grateful. You can train, you know, the algorithm, just what I like is what I want to see the positive stuff and, and everything like that. You know, I don't, I've tried to tell some young people to limit their time on that. They're not going to do it. I mean, they're going to do it when they want to do it to each their own. Um, I think it has a lot of positive effects, social media, a lot, but to your point, a, a lot of negative. And like I said, I'm just glad that I didn't have that when I was younger. Right. I, I think about thing. that. And I'm like, we did a lot of stupid shit. No evidence about it. Thank God. No, no iPhone, no nothing. So it's like, oh, thank God there was nothing. Cause I can't even imagine what would have, you know, what would have come out of it. I'd still be in the clink. Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> exactly. 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 And there is that pressure. Like you see these, you, you see these people, 
but even myself, I go on, I, I look at accounts where it's women doing exactly what I'm doing. I'm like, and they're way ahead of me. And then it's that, oh, I'm not doing enough. I'm not good enough. And then you have to constantly remind yourself again, without me going through everything that I had gone through and all the therapy that I've gone through and talking those things out. Now I can, I can recognize when I get those thoughts. It doesn't mean it doesn't like briefly affect you. Of course it does, you know? Um, but again, just limiting, limiting myself from it is, is the key for me, for me. Well, let's touch on that comparison yeah. because as yes. someone with an eating disorder, right. And just yeah. grew up the way I grew up. Yeah. Constantly being compared. Yeah. Now I know you come from, you have three siblings, right? Yeah. There was four of uh, four of us total uh, myself. Yeah my brother who passed and I have twin sisters. Yes. So that, and are you the oldest? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got that. So, but were you ever compared? Like maybe you didn't get compared because you had a brother, but I had a younger sister and I say it were Irish twins, right? Yep. So like under a year, man, it was a good year though while I was a single. Only child. <laughs> Wish I took more advantage of that. But like, did you feel that wrath or did you have cousins that you were compared to a lot? Yeah, I would say definitely. Certainly, um, I felt like I was compared to my sisters a lot of times. Um, Cause I, I more like, look like my dad's side and they look like my mom's side, like look totally different. Right. Um, <laughs> But just, just time and maturity. I, um, I love the way I don't mean to sound this conceited. I love the way I look today. I love my body. I love my athletic body. You know, back then I wanted to be, oh God, who's the model that I totally looked up? The Kate Mosses were, you were real freaking thin. Heroin you know. chic. No boobs, no ass, yeah. no nothing. I was like, why can't I have that? And now I'm like, Thank gosh, I don't look like that because that's, it wouldn't look right on me. I love that for certain people. It just doesn't look right on me. I, once I fell in love with me, there was like no stopping anything. Um, but again, I really, really think that comes with time and maturity. I never would have thought like that as a teenager. <laughs> it just, but you kind of come I... on your own. That's not conceit, my friend. That's what we all strive for, to look in the mirror and be like, damn it, good job, my friend, right? <laughs> I look good. I good. And, and to have the clarity that you have, because not all of us have it, mm -hmm. uh, to know and to be comfortable in your skin, mm -hmm. that, that is the goal. How the hell did you get there? Because I, I need to know that part. Oh, I... I, this is, look, if anybody wants to do this, I will tell you, it'll change, change your world. Give it 30 days. This is the best thing that you can do. I'm a big fan of sticky notes. Oh my God, they're all over my freaking house. Okay. So like the sticky pads, go get yourself, go get yourself one. This one's orange. I love the colors. Okay. And for 30 days, and keep it in your bathroom if you want to. If you get ready in the bathroom, I think that's how I started out. Yeah, I think that was the very first. I mean, I've been doing this for years now. But if you're just starting out, I want you to get a sticky pad and a pen. And every morning when you go into that bathroom, you're going to write down three things that you are grateful for yourself about you. I don't care if it's, I like my left eyebrow. It's really perfect. Like, I, I am grateful for my left eyebrow. No one's seeing this. This is for you and you're going to stick it on your bathroom mirror or you're going to put it in your pocket and you're going to carry it with you all day and you're going to look at it. Three things that you're grateful for. It can have to do with your personality, something that you've done in your life, any accomplishment, your clothes. I'm rocking this outfit today. My boobs, my ass, I don't care what it is. 30 days in a row, what you are grateful for, for you. You can't imagine the difference on how you'll see yourself at the end. At the end, I, I, I was seeing myself completely different and I kept it up. You know, then it's, 
three things, you know, I would write down three things that I'm grateful for. My partner, it works for your partner. Start with you though, because if you want to be as comfortable as possible, I'm not saying that you're going to think you're perfect at the end. That's not the, it's not even the, the goal of the exercise, but it's to start recognizing things that you forget that you love about yourself. What do you, what have you forgotten that you, that you love about yourself? You know, you love your teeth or your big toe. It doesn't matter. I have, I have great toenails. I don't know. Okay. That's a little weird that that was not on my list, but I mean, okay. it could be for somebody if they have great to toenails, whatever, wherever that is. Um, if, if you don't start thinking about yourself in a different light, then no one else will see you that way either. I'm always talking about team for one and does it suck for the team for one yeah but you have to be your own cheerleader yeah. so you better get love on yourself because it's going to be a really sh well crappy life right yeah. and i remember going it was my uncle's funeral actually and listening to my mom and my aunts compare themselves and they're in their 70s right yeah. Yeah. and and i'm like is this how long this is going to go on for like you're going to compare what you're eating and talk about your bodies. I'm like, this is exhausting. And I just started recovery then. And I was sitting like this, like rain man at the table, all foods, good food, all foods, good food, all foods, good food. And I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> and I'm like, do you know what's happening right now? And they're like, why is Heather freaking out? She, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, and it doesn't need to be like that. Some comparison is good. Like I'll compare some things with my sisters when we get together, like, Hey, if you started hot flashes yet, or like, if you notice like any, like those things, I get in dragon <laughs> or if, if we notice some extra like bra fat, what the hell is going on? Like things like that. That's okay. Like that's, that's something positive where we can, we can talk as women or, or to like close friends and we can say, Hey, are you experiencing something like this too? It's when it turns into a negative where you're going, why don't you're thinking this in your head? Why don't, why does my waist not look like that? Why is my ass not that high? That's when it starts to get, you know, not very positive in our own mind. And that's where the 30 days writing down three things you're grateful for, for yourself, um, or things that you're accomplishing, it, it puts the forefront in your mind, you'll start rewiring your brain instead and of it's possible. You can do that. Absolutely. Like brain plasticity. I mean, it's a big thing. Um, so why not give it a try? <laughs> why not? Give right. It a try? And I always say it's like chasing the rainbow, right? And we have similar lives. <laughs> If if I move across the country, my life's going to be better. If I lose five pounds, my life's going to be better. If yep. I marry someone else, my life's going to be better. I've done that three freaking times. And like, if I just do this, my life's going to be better. The rainbow always moves. Yep. You will never touch the rainbow. Ever. It's just not going to happen. I love that. It, it's 100% true. I, I'd, I'd really love that. It, and it's, you have to ask yourself, do you want to be 70 and comparing yourself and still saying you're not enough? I don't know. Maybe you do. I don't. No, not me. I don't. No, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't. So it, it started with me having to work on me <laughs> is the bottom line. So that you're not chasing those unrealistic goals your whole life. And as I was researching you, you talked yeah. about something and I, I just loved it. You talked about excuse-itis. Excuse-itis. Right? And I'm like, oh, well, that should have been called Heather-itis. Right? And, you know, and everyone always has an excuse for something. I can't do that. There's no way I can do that. I can't get better. I can't kick my addiction. Like, wh whatever your, your deal is. Right? Yep. You, me, we are still human we're not i don't think you have a superpower and if you do share with me please but mm -hmm. it is that rep repetition of retraining your brain mm -hmm. 
How do you get out of the, and we all know those people, the, ex, the Eeyore people, the excuse-itis mm -hmm. people. How do you move forward mm -hmm. in that? I call it arguing for your limitations. When people argue for their limitations, it's all you're doing. And um, first and foremost is recognizing that you're doing it. Every little excuse, well, I can't do that. I, um, you know, I, I'm in perimenopause or I'm over 45. I, I can't do that. Every time you say I can't, sit back and think about it for a second. Why did I say that? Why did I say I can't? Take I can't. I literally despise the words I can't. And I said them all the time. All the time. I, ca I can't do that because I have kids. I can't do that because of this. I can't do that. That was like my my whole vocabulary, I swear. <laughs> and And when you just start to recognize it and change that language, change that language is going on inside your brain. Um, look, I'm, I'm a big fan of writing things down. I'm, I like to write, I'm a writer, like an actual pen to paper. So I'm not all digital yet. I just, that will probably never leave me. Um, there's also been many, many studies that you put that pen to paper, it sears into your brain, um, much more than just saying something. So every time you say, I can't to something, write down three reasons you can. Or recognize that you said it. Uh, it got to a point. It got to a point when I was like really into this, you know, healing myself that I was like analyzing almost everything I was thinking. I, I wouldn't say go that crazy, but certainly initially, you know, what is my brain pattern? Like, what am I, what am I doing? What am I saying yeah. to myself all the time? Because whatever we're saying to ourselves. It's coming out in reality. That's that's what we're projecting to the world. Um, so I would say, again, first is recognition. And stop arguing for your limitations. And start doing. I can't do 30 push-ups. Okay, great. You don't have to say that. I, I can do 10. Let me Let me try 10. Maybe work on 10. <laughs> yeah. You know, just start, start small, start, start small, nothing, nothing huge. Um, one thing at a time. And I love that. Like, I love your story so much. <laughs> oh. And I love that you are very open and honest. You're my kind of person and talk about, and I always say a front burner person as mm -hmm. opposed to being a back burner person and you're very very um you own your front burner very, very much <laughs> and that's okay and now you've talked about being a back burner person about mm -hmm. helping and being a guide which is what life's all about and gratitude and giving back damn it when, when you've been through some stuff you learn give them back is it right and yeah. How did you come to that conclusion of getting into the, the giving back to your community and what affects you? Great question. Um, I, I just want to say before I answer that is like those who have been through it are the ones that you need to listen to. You are the ones that have that superpower to help other people. Follow the guides. Follow the guides. That's the biggest thing. That gym that I stumbled into, hung over and took a cycling class. Within months, I was teaching there. I was the cycling instructor. I was up on the stage and I was helping that audience. I went from there to another big gym uh, and opened up one of their locations. And from there, I went to Equinox. And it was in Equinox, the person that hired me really is my friend and my mentor. I love her so, so much, uh, Patricia. And again, I was being guided where I was supposed to go. And I was teaching there and having a great time. And, and people would come up to me before and after classes. What do you do to like stay in, 
stay in shape or what do you drink or what do you eat? And, you know, those kind of things, right? And then the pandemic happened and everything shut down. And I called Patricia and I said, I want to help more people than just the people in my classes. Bigger, bigger. So we did a social distancing walk around a lake in this beautiful, uh, beautiful place that I live. And um, she told me about a program that she had gone through, that she had gone back to school and uh, became certified um, health and wellness based in positive psychology. And I said, that's for me. And so I went back to school and, and did that and then opened up my own business so that I can help people wherever they could be in Canada, <laughs> they With could no be power. <laughs> around the world. And, um, uh, uh, and, and really there is something to be said for positivity and, and gratitude. So those are the two things that, um, I base everything in is positivity and gratitude again. You know, if you can do a half a push up, I'm freaking happy. I'm here to make it simple for beginners and to help you, you know, whatever you're navigating. There's one last thing I, I do want to point this out. Um, even if you don't play in the stock market, we've all seen like how the stock market up and down, up and down, but it goes up over time, right? So if you could draw a straight line through it, 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 it goes up over time, but there are dips, there are ups and those, those are downs. That is what your health and happiness life looks like. It's not always up. It goes down, things happen. It's how long we stay down. It's having the right tools, the correct coping mechanisms, right? That we shorten the time, how long we're down and we get that line back up. As long as it keeps heading in an upward direction, um, you're going to live a great life, going to live a really, really great life. And so again, all of those things happen, all those, those timelines happen that led me to where I am now for a reason. And I thank David and I am grateful for David because- Your angel. I, I would have never ended up in, in Los Angeles. My oldest daughter went to a top school here where on day one, she met her future husband. None of those things would have happened. She would have gone to college in, in, in the Northeast where we're from, right? So it's, it's, it's taking a step There is out. no coincidence, my friend. Yeah. The universe is a weird thing. Oh, it's great. If you can just zoom out and kind of see yourself, see it from back here, as opposed to in the, in the everyday little things, um, there's a lot of positivity. And I always talk about, cause I'm a cynical kind of person, and, <laughs> but I am, I try, I try very hard to find, <laughs> I always say, find the funny and the fucked up. Because even though your life is fucked right up, yes, there's something funny about it. And that's how I cope. Because if I didn't, I'd cry. And I'm done crying. Yeah. But once you get through that one positive door, another door will open. Mm -hmm. And then you find the people on the positive hallway, right? If I didn't go through what I went through, I wouldn't have met you, right? Yep. And learn from my guides, the people who I want to be, right? Mm -hmm. People who are successful in this business. I want to help, right? Because my story is no different. I just talk about it. <laughs> That's the only difference. Yep. Front burner. Heather, you, you will get what you're looking for in life. Everybody will get what you're looking for. And if you're looking for positive people to surround yourself with, if you're looking to live a happy life, you will find it and you will find those people. If you're looking for the opposite, you're going to find that too. There's plenty of it. As a matter of fact, there's probably more negative than positive sometimes, right? Especially on like the news end and all, all the things, right? You'll find it. So decide what you're looking for. And just jump. Jump. Yeah. It's not the fall. It's hitting the ground. That sucks. No, just... <laughs> Like, how long you stay on the ground right <laughs> right 
We want to shorten that. We want to shorten that time. Get up. (laughs) Get up. But it does like, and everyone's going to fall. And I, I'm, I'm glad that you're talking about that because everyone's going to fall and it's going to suck the first time. Yeah, but you get back up. Yeah. And the more you get back up, it's not the really. Oh, well, falling's just part of life. Yeah. You and I were talking about our dogs before we before we jumped on. Um. Oh my gosh, I love my dogs like more than I, I'm. I'm a huge animal lover. Again, growing up on the farm, I have a very big soft spot for dogs. I want all the dogs in the world. Um, they're not going to live forever. I, I, things are going to happen. I may lose, you know, more friends or or family members. Now I have different mechanisms to help me through those things. But I had to, I had to, I had to go through that for me first. And I had to take care of me first to even get to that. Right. So, so for anyone listening, if you're in any, in any tough spot, I promise there is, there's a light at at the end of the tunnel for sure. I had someone say quit future fucking because there's nothing you can do about it. And why worry about something twice? Oh, that's a good one. That's right? a good one. I'm like, oh man, I'm learning all this stuff in my 40s. I'm telling you, being in your 40s and having like a near death experience really kind of shines a light. So it really does. I mean, I don't recommend <laughs> it, but like, <laughs> yes, no, it 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 really it really really does, and it gives us better tools. Um, yeah, I love that. I love that's very true. Future fucky. <laughs> I always say future tripping. That's a good one. I'm going to keep that one too. <laughs> hey, you can take whatever you like, my friend. So I want you to come back. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Okay. I know you're a very busy lady living out there, the life in California with all the sunshine. <laughs> well, I'm here in Vancouver and rain, but uh, I'm going to come visit. The Canadian yeah. is coming. Where can we find you, my friend? Okay. Uh, well, you can find me on my website, uh, www.ginaparin.com. It's just my name. It's super simple. I'm on all the social media platforms, Gina Perrin. Uh, it's nothing, nothing hidden. I do have a, a new sugar-free toolkit that is out. So uh, I do live a sugar-free diet, um, sh- uh, no to low sugar. So if you're looking to like get a little bit healthier. Uh, that's completely free. Just head to my website. You can sign up there and I do send out a weekly, uh, health newsletter, totally free. Um, so you're, you're welcome to sign up for that as well. Well, and that's a great spot to start. Cause if you yeah. find your village, find Simple. your people, find your guides and get an email from you. It sounds great to me. I want an email <laughs> every week. Yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome. I hope you come back. I just adore you. I will. Thank you, Heather, so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And all I can think about is going into that spin class hungover. Man, oh man, that's got to suck. Do ah! not recommend. Do not recommend. I do, do not, not do recommend. That. Don't do it. <laughs> Have Thank a great you. day, my friend. Thank you, my Heather. That's all for this episode of 1% Better. To continue the conversation, head over to our website at www.1percentbetter.ca, where you can access more stories and resources. We'd also love it if you subscribed and left us a review on your favorite podcast platform. And remember, friends, progress takes patience, perspective, and sometimes a little help from people who get it. So be kind to yourself and others as we work to get 1% better every day. We'll see you back here next week.